Welcome to Lifestyle of the Interesting and Infamous. As always, I'm Julie Maria, and today we have an outrageous guest. His name is Mike Carpenter, and he's the man. Yeah, People call you Carp, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what my nickname since I was a little kid. Cool. Yeah. So did you know you were going to start jumping on planes when you were a little kid? No, it really didn't occur to me until a friend of mine 21 years ago, actually, um, he went skydiving for the first time, and he was raving about it, so it was kind of one of those things that piqued my curiosity, and I did my first jump in uh, 1989, and I've been jumping ever since. Where was it? It was in upstate New York, actually. Yeah, it was near the Canadian border. Hmm. It's pretty cool. It pretty static cool. lines. We didn't do uh, tandem skydiving so much back then, so when you learned how to jump out of a plane, you were typically... Uh, attached to the plane with what's called a static line like you've seen in like the military, those mm -hmm. types of things. So as soon as you jumped out the parachute opened right away and just work your way through the learning process that way. So we didn't get the free fall like we do nowadays. Interesting. Yeah. It's totally it's totally different then, right? Totally different yep. experience. Yep. It's actually much better. You get to learn a lot more in a shorter period of time because we take people through the training process, you know, and we can take you up to fourteen thousand feet so you get a lot of working time when you're jumping out of a plane. Cool. So how yeah. many jumps have you been on so far? Uh, close to 9,000. That's just pretty big up there. Yeah, it's quite a few jumps. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're the owner of Skydiving, yeah, right? Yeah. So, how did that occur to you to actually open a company like this? Because I feel like that's a big step. That's a big, huge responsibility. Yeah, it was a big responsibility. Um, actually, I was in medical school in Boston for nine years. And uh, I was working at Mass General Hospital. And I used to jump up here. It was, this place had been in business before under New England Adventure, so it was a different owner. Mm -hmm. And uh, he put the place up for sale, and I was an instructor here at the time, and I loved the place, so I figured I'd be ready to try. So, <laughs> what did you do in the medical field? I used to work with uh, radiation oncology, so it was mm -hmm. sort of uh, treating cancer patients with radiation. Yeah. So, you went straight from that to this, and it, so. What were you thinking when you did it? Were you like, this isn't going to work? Or were you scared at first? Like, what was the process of getting it up and going? Yeah, it was pretty nerve wracking. You had to obviously take out some big loans and mm -hmm. kind of put yourself out there. And, you know, I had a, kind of a vision that uh, I could make it work, and, and the place was working before, and it was just a little bit going downhill. The guy that owned it before was not putting as much time into it, and I saw the, the possibilities that this place had. It's such a magical place, you know. Right. Was it a resort then, too? Um, people didn't camp out so much here, so when, you know, when I took it over, part of the vision was to uh, you know, embrace first-time jumpers and have them hang out and see the lifestyle of people who jump all the time. And, and um, I just felt like um, you know, not just coming and showing up and making a jump and going home, just kind of getting actively involved Enjoy in the lifestyle. The and, you know, spending the night, having a bonfire. We try to do live music on the weekends, so it gives people some entertainment. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that, that notion has taken off really well. I mean, sometimes we have 500 people camping out here on a Saturday, and you know, it's pretty cool. It's definitely a neat place, because when I went to Vegas, it was just, you know, you jump, you go home, you're done. You know, I mean, here I walked in, and I was like, this is awesome, yeah. I could stay here for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, do you think that the business adventure was scarier than jumping out of a plane? Much scarier than jumping out of a plane. Which is weird, because <laughs> jumping out of a plane is terrifying yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Well, you, you've done it before, obviously, so it's kind of terrifying in, you know, in theory, but once you get up there and you're with your instructor and you just kind of get comfortable after going through some classes and all that stuff, it's, it's not so crazy, do you think? I mean, it's still pretty crazy, but it's amazing crazy. It's like one of those things that I think every person should try. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's definitely, you got to do it. I'm trying to talk my mom into going. Yeah. She's, she's kind of getting it. She's going to go. <laughs> She's going to love it. Yeah, she'll love it. Well, when you jump again, you'll just get, your, you know, get the video. Show mm -hmm. it to your mom. She's going to want to go. No, I've showed her. She's, she's kind of, you know, she's a hippie. She's, she can understand. Does she? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she'll, she'll fit right in here then. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, you're into base jumping, too. What's the difference between base jumping and... Oh, uh, well, base jumping, you only wear one parachute. You know, if you're skydiving, you have a lot of altitude uh, on your side. So the higher that you jump from, the higher you open your parachute, it's much safer. Um, and obviously you have a backup parachute where in base jumping you tend to jump off of uh, lower you know, fixed objects and have uh, one parachute instead of two. <laughs> so it's the craziest place you jumped off of? In uh, probably the building in Bangkok maybe. Yeah. <laughs> in Bangkok, but I've jumped all over the world. We did uh, the thing that you've ever seen the Cave of the Swallows in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And we jumped into a, a 1400 foot cave from hole in the Ground basically and landed down there with all the birds and bats and stuff. It was, it was pretty cool. So, I mean, could you imagine the stuff when you were younger, like that you were going to see the things you've seen? Because I'm sure you've 
seen some of the craziest things. Yeah, no, um, you know, I don't think skydiving was really out there in the public forum so much when I was a kid, so you didn't see really a whole bunch of it on TV or whatever, you know, now it's sort of commonplace to see, you see it on a 7 Up commercial or right. whatever, so back then I don't even think it really occurred to me that I'd be traveling the world and jumping off of buildings and stuff. Especially when you were going to school yeah. for medical school, right. that's kind of like, you know, you got to stay focused and that kind of thing, you know? Exactly. And this was a great release for me too, it was a very high pressure, you know, school obviously, mm -hmm. so. Uh, coming up here on the weekends was just like, this was my... Your zen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Relax and jump out of the plane. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have any um, future goals from it, or is this kind of like... Um, we're just kind of like, I think what we're doing now, this is our 26th season, and every year we sort of have, um, we have new goals in terms of fixing up the place and what we want to do with our student training program and how we can make things better. So really the goal is just to continue to evolve the place and make it safe for students and people come and have a good time and just keep the sport going in the right direction. So for all those people who are afraid, do you know like the statistics on like what the death ratio is? Because I've heard it's only like five in the past like 10 years when there's 2,500 people jumping a year and having five people like having fatalities. Yeah, it's, not that's, common. it's actually, um, in the United States, uh, we do about 3.3 to 3.4 million jumps a year mm -hmm. in the U.S. Um, and typically, if you're going to get hurt or get killed in skydiving, it's 99.9% you know, .9 of the time it's uh, an experienced jumper doing things that are a little bit beyond their skill level. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, people think, in, you know, if you hear on the news something happened to somebody, they say, well, they always say the chute didn't open. Right. It's kind of a misnomer because people's chute always open. Sometimes their parachute isn't safe to land, you know, if it's not opening and functioning properly, they can use their backup parachute. And typically the people that get hurt or killed in the sport, it has nothing to do with the gear because the gear has come such a long way that it's so reliable. Right, because they have like the automatic ones now. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even know about that before. Yeah. I just did it and I had no idea about that. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at that. Well, we try to tell people that stuff because it makes you feel better and you realize that there are all these safety things in place. So statistically, your chances of even breaking your ankle skydiving is 1 in 60,000. So it's way better than driving a car. Yeah, it's way better than driving a car. <laughs> <laughs> or riding a motorcycle out of home or something. So but how yeah. many certifications did you have to go through to like be, you know, because you, you do everything. You're pretty much the god of this place, I would say. <laughs> well, <laughs> We're speaking that. to God right now, guys. <laughs> wow, so you better listen to one of those guys. No, um, yeah, I've got all my certifications. I fly the plane and I take people on the first time jumps. I actually have an instructor examiner rating so I can teach people how to become instructors. So you're pretty much writing the book. Right. Well, they wrote the book for me. I'll just <laughs> go buy it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really cool. I enjoy doing it. You know, I like taking people on the first jumps and taking a lot of handicapped people, you know, so yeah. get them out of a wheelchair and them up and the skydive. It's really kind of that an honor to do that. Yeah. Do you ever have anybody like throw up on you? No, thank God, but it does happen. <laughs> Don't drink too much beer before you jump. And make sure you stay hydrated and you'll be fine. You know, it doesn't, as you know, it doesn't have that roller coaster effect that some people think. You know, yeah. when you're jumping out of the plane, you don't lose your stomach. It's a lot. Like it's very calm, surprisingly, yeah. especially unless the chute opens and you're kind of like floating through the air. You're like, wait, this is very relaxing. Yeah, it's not so bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, that's cool. what's your favorite part of this whole job, the whole experience? I'm uh, just watching people jump and when they land, just seeing their face, especially the first time jumpers, you know, they just have this look, you know, they see them get on the bus and they're going up in the plane and they have this look of apprehension mm -hmm. on their face and then after they jump, you see a total transformation. You can totally see it in my video because I was like, yeah. when I'm jumping out, I'm like, nah, nah, and then I get to the bottom, I'm like, this is so awesome, I'm doing it again, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it again, <laughs> I want to spend $300 more. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much the reaction we get from most people. It's totally crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, so do you, do you have killed children or anything? No, no kids yet. See, about 99.9, .9, you know, that's like with birth control too, so you got very similar. <laughs> birth control yeah. and jumping out of planes, very similar. Yeah, you're better now. <laughs> yeah. um, so where's the best place that you've jumped from? Like, since, because it totally depends. Like, it, when I first jumped, I was like, oh, is it a lot like um, pilot wings for Nintendo? Because if you ever played that game, you no, jump no. out of plane. Well, there's like different landscapes and stuff. You can jump near water, you can jump near, and it's the same thing, same idea. Like you're seeing these landscapes, you see the drop zone, you see where like you're gonna land at. Yeah. Like, what's the best one do you think that you've seen? I think it's right here. And it is beautiful. Lebanon, Maine. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can see the White Mountains and Lake Winnipesaukee, and you can see the whole coast. You know, we can see three states on a clear day. You see, we can actually see downtown Boston on a real clear day. And you can, so you see uh, 
you know, Massachusetts coastline, you see the New Hampshire coastline, you can see all the Maine, so it's real pretty. Yeah, right, that's beautiful. Here. I think this is probably the most unique place I've ever seen, you know, because the, the vibe, everything, the vibe, the people, the, the beauty of nature, you know, the only thing that stinks is the fact that you can't do it year round, you know? Um, yeah, well, sometimes it's good to have a little break, too. You tend to appreciate things more. If you were here year, year round, a lot of times you just sort of lose that uh, enthusiasm because yeah. it's sort of. Like I've been jumping in Florida quite a bit, and they're year round, and it just doesn't have the same sort of appeal because people can do it anytime, so they're kind of blase about it, you know. Yeah. yeah, so here, we, you know, as New Englanders, you got to do what you got to do in the outside world. We're a little bit more rugged. Yeah, you know, and really it pops when the season gets going. It starts off a little bit slow, but when the weather hits, people come out and drove, so. So what is, what is the whole season? Uh, we are open from the middle of April to the end of October. Like the foliage season is really nice. All the seasons are really nice to jump. You know? I can imagine the foliage yeah, being really cool. So, um, so 26 years of this, huh? What do you do in the winter time? Uh, travel. Yeah, do a lot of traveling. Last year, I think I hit 11 countries in, since November. We actually uh, one of the nicest things we did this year was we took our airplane down to Haiti brought them some food, medical supplies, we did a couple of runs there. That's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. That's I cool. definitely think that if I ever start an adventure, like any kind of business adventure, I'm definitely going to do charity. Because, you know, why not? There's other people that deserve things that can't actually get to the point where they'll be able to do it for themselves. So, yeah. if you have the opportunity to give, you should. Yeah. You should always give. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, that's exactly what we did. Mm -hmm. We took our plane here, the auto that you're going to be jumping out of here shortly. Um, we took that plane, filled it up with rice and food and medical supplies and brought it to the people in Haiti. Amazing. Yeah, that's cool. It's going to be amazing to see their smiles, similar smiles. Yep, exactly. Like gratefulness, you know? Yeah, they were happy to see us, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> they were happy to see them, too. What so. was it like there? Was it like, don't start the devastation or? Um, yeah, it was just a little People were starving, and people, they just had no place to go. I mean, the place that we landed in was uh, out in the out in the countryside. We had to go to uh, Port-au-Prince, where all the the epicenter of the earthquake was. And the problem is that people can't get out to those, you know, out to the uh, countryside. There's no roads or anything to get there. So we were the first plane. Uh, and it was like three weeks later after the earthquake hit. We were the first plane to bring any supplies to them. So they were really hurt. That's food. amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm glad that you do that. That's yeah. incredible. You have a very good aura. I feel very yeah. comfortable and safe around you. Thank you. <laughs> Which is good when you're jumping out of planes. <laughs> exactly. And all the guys are like that. I think we yeah. have a pretty good crew. We have people from all over, like Paulo's from Italy. We have from Canadian guys, Australians, and I'm sure you've seen yeah. different accents. So. Yeah, I love accents. Yeah. Big part of human nature, having those accents because it brings you back to where you're from, you know? Yeah. Whether they want to lose it or not, they can't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pretend. <laughs> Well, that's cool, yeah. yeah. Well, I know you're going to like it. No, no matter who you jump with, you're going to have a blast. But it's really kind of... So what's the whole like training that. process? What do you have to go through to actually become like a, a tandem or a videographer? Um, for a tandem instructor, you have to have a previously a um, some kind of an instructor rating, like a coach rating or an accelerator free fall instructor or something like that. So you have to get one instructor rating first, uh, which typically is a coach rating. Mm -hmm. They go through about a about a five-day school, and then they have to do some evaluation jumps with an examiner. Mm -hmm. uh, once they do that, uh, they have to reach a minimum of 500, tan 500 jumps before they can even apply for getting a tandem rating. Okay. And then I'll take them and uh, we'll train them, um, we'll put them through a five-day ground school, and then they have to do a series of 10 jumps with an experienced uh, instructor on the front. So they go through quite a bit of stuff to get that rating.